Hello everyone, I am Ibrahim Tufaha, a computer science graduate student from Jordan University of Science and Technology. Today, I will talk about our work on neural Arabic text diacritization, our state-of-the-art results, and the novel approach for machine translation. Why do we need diacritization and how to use them in machine translation? The presentation will go as follows. First, we will talk about the Arabic language and the diacritization. Then, mention the available datasets for the problem at hand, list the existing systems, their approaches, and their results. We explain the approaches we used for diacritization and the results we achieved, and present our novel approach, translation over diacritization for machine translation. Finally, we will discuss future work and conclude this paper. The community of Arabic speakers has one of the largest growth rates on the internet, increasing the interest in Arabic natural language processing over the years. Yet, the work on NLP is lacking due to poor investing efforts and the lack of linguistic resources available for researchers and developers. Arabic differs from most other languages in mainly two things, the right-to-left writing style and the addition of diacritics to each letter. Diacritics are super important as they have huge influence on the meaning of the sentence, where changing one or two diacritics might give the sentence a whole different meaning. This makes diacritics important for both understanding the content when reading a book or listening to the news and other applications like Arabic text-to-speech. We will be discussing standard Arabic only because colloquial Arabic diacritization is not as important. Also. Standard Arabic is split into Classical Arabic, like old books and poetry, and Modern Standard Arabic, which is used in today's books, news, articles, and magazines. Here's an example explaining the dependencies between words, and how context from both left and right can have an impact on the word's diacritization. If we have the incomplete sentence, Kalam Ahmad, then, depending on the last word, the first word might mean, might be kallama, meaning talked, or kalama, which means wounded. When we talk about machine learning and neural networks, the first big concern we have is the datasets. Are they available and are they big enough? For the diacritization problem, the only available and free dataset is the Shkila corpus, where in Fadl 2019 paper, an adaptation from Teshkila was made by cleaning the data and extracting lines with 80% or more diacritics to Arabic characters rates. More details about this dataset is available in the paper. Multiple rule-based existing systems were reviewed in Fadl 2019, where they all had issues and reported poor results. Very few worked on diacritization using machine learning approaches where instead of relying on linguistic rules to solve the problem, the system learns by example given a correctly labeled, appropriate, and big enough dataset. The first efforts in this direction were in 2015, when two teams presented similar approaches in two concurrent but independent papers. The first team was Belinkov and Glass, whose system relied on no linguistic features or tools. The system was trained on data from Arabic TreeBank dataset only, experimenting with feedforward neural networks, recurrent neural networks, such as bidirectional long short-term memory networks, and character-level embeddings. The other team, led by Abenda, followed a similar approach, but with data from Arabic TreeBank, Tashkila Corpus, and Holy Quran, achieving state-of-the-art performance after applying some language-dependent post-processing and error correction techniques. The last and most important work is the open-source project Shakala, which was built by Barqawi and Zarruqi in 2017 using embeddings, BLSTMs, batch normalization, and dense layers to process each time step of the recurrent neural network output, as shown in the output model structure on the right. Belinkov's model performed poorly on the testing dataset. This is probably because it was trained on Arabic tree bank only. 
Further work is needed to make it better. As for Abende's work, it's not available to test, neither open source nor closed source. So, Fadel 2019 only compared Chakala system by Barqawi and found that it does a much better job in diacritization. The commonly used evaluation metrics for diacritization problem are the diacritic error rate and word error rate. We use Fadel definition where the diacritic error rate is the percentage of misclassified Arabic characters, whether the character has 0, 1, or 2 diacritics. And the word error rate is the percentage of Arabic words which have at least one misclassified Arabic character. Previous work used diacritic and word error rate definitions from Zaytuni. The problem with these definitions is that they take into consideration the numbers and punctuations when counting the number of characters and the number of words. This slide shows how Zaytuni's definitions results in reduced diacritic and word error rates when counting the non-Arabic characters. Here, only one character is misclassified, but when counting commas and exclamation marks, the error rate is reduced in both diacritic and word error rates, where they should not be counted. A sample from Fadel's paper of the results for each of the systems are shown in this table. We can clearly see that the neural network approach outperforms the traditional rule-based approaches by a significant margin, where Shakala has 3.73% diacritic error rate, and 11.19% word error rate. And the best rule-based system, which is Mishkal, has 16.09 diacritic error rate and 39.78 word error rate. The idea with our first approach was to consider each character individually as a separate problem and try to find its best diacritization based on information from preceding and following characters using feedforward neural networks. Each character is converted to a 100-dimensional vector representing the character itself and the surrounding information. For example, in the sentence Dahab Ali, the vector representing the character Ba contains all the preceding and following characters while filling the caps with a special padding token. Each character belongs to one of the 15 classes represented in the table. We tried three techniques to enhance the results of the model. The first one was to map the characters to unique integer IDs. The second one was to map each character to its one hot representation, then concatenate their, their representations. The last one used an embedding matrix to represent the features for each character. The best results for this approach was 5.52% diacritic error rate, while the model was able to diacritize the Arabic sentence below with zero errors. The following figure shows the accuracy and loss on the training and validation data during the training process, which clarifies that the model didn't overfit the training data as the validation accuracy kept improving. In this approach, we consider each sequence of characters as an example, so the model will learn the dependencies between the characters and take the context of each character into consideration using recurrent neural networks. Each sequence of characters is converted to an example by prepending a start of sequence token and appending an end of sequence token. The unknown characters were replaced by a special unknown character. For training purposes, the sequence within the same batch are padded with a special padding character to have the same length. Each input sequence has an output sequence containing the output class for each character. The basic model structure appears on the right. We tried several techniques to enhance the results of this structure. The first one to, was to use CRF classifier instead of softmax classifier which didn't work well for us. The second technique was to use a normalized Adam optimizer, which improved the results a bit. The big improvements came from the last two techniques. 
The weights averaging technique was used to average the weights of the last x epochs to overcome overfitting. The last technique was to increase the training data from 50,000 lines to 500,000 lines, which decreased the results by about 1% diacritic error rate. The best results from this approach was 1.69 diacritic error rate. The model diacritized the Arabic sentence below without any errors. This figure shows the diacritic error rate on the validation dataset while training for the basic CRF and normalized models using the small and large datasets. It is clear that the dataset size has a huge impact on the results. By studying the confusion matrix of our best model trained on the small and the big datasets, we can see that the dataset size has a big impact on the classes with small instances, like the Shedda class, which goes from 11% to 80% accuracy. Comparing our results to Shakala system shows that our model achieved better results on the original test set, which is a part of the Shkila corpus, and the auxiliary test set, which is extracted from al Shamila library. Belinkov system shows poor results on the original test set, which is a classical Arabic dataset, and the auxiliary dataset, which is a modern standard Arabic dataset extracted from Tishkila corpus. To compare our results with Abandi system, we extracted all the diacritized lines from the books in Tishkila corpus that Abandi used for training and testing, which didn't exist in our training dataset and calculated the diacritic and word error rates over them using our best model. Our word error rate is better than theirs, while their diacritic error rate is slightly better than ours. But keep in mind that our system achieves better results compared to Abende's results without the post-processing they used. Translation over diacritization is a technique used to enhance Arabic to English machine translation results. This technique provides a simple way to disambiguate homographic words by adding diacritics to each one of them. We tried two approaches to integrate the diacritics into the Arabic text. The first one was to use the diacritized text directly without any preprocessing steps. The second one was to treat the sequence of diacritics as a parallel sequence with the characters. So, we can represent the words and the diacritization forms using two separated embedding matrices. Then, embeddings for each word is concatenated with its diacritization form embeddings. We extracted a parallel corpus of 1 million sentence pairs from 7 corpora downloaded from Opus open source project. The 1 million sentence pairs were split into 990,000 for training and 10,000 for testing. The table below shows the vocabulary size for each language before and after applying BPE segmentation technique. The following figure shows the translation over diacritization model structure, consisting of one LSTM encoding layer and one LSTM decoding layer while applying additive attention on the outputs of the encoder layer. The experiments show that using diacritics but as a separate sequence gives the best results compared to either not using any diacritization or using them merged with the text. This figure shows the blue score for the three trained models on the testing dataset during the training, reported every five epochs. The with diacritics model converges much faster than the without diacritics model, but the merged model diverges due to the vocabulary sparsity, while the separated model continues to learn while training. Future work will include working on the model structure by experimenting with convolutional neural networks and transformers, using different datasets to include MSA, possibly work on other languages, as this approach is language independent, use diacritics to improve other systems such as sentiment analysis and semantic text similarity.
To conclude this work, we presented a strong state-of-the-art approach for Arabic text diacritization while providing a variety of tools that can be used to train new models and enhance the current ones. In order to enhance the reproducibility of our work, the large dataset is publicly available on GitHub along with the training and testing codes. Thank you for listening.